Hi, this is a quick video for Nemi on how to use the lasso and feather it. I see that um, you created a uh, selection in the sky here, and yet I see how there's uh, you darken the sky, which is good. Uh, but notice all the little like cutouts, like uh, you took a very fine pair of scissors to cut. Um, the sky out and darken it. So what we want to do is blend this so that it, it flows nicely. I will uh, work on this picture anyway. Um, the, if there's one thing all of you guys need to learn from this class, it's how to evaluate light and luminance in your pictures and where the focal point is and how to balance the light so that the the focal point is the source of light, is the presence of light. Um, when we shoot with sky in our pictures, uh, you can see that the sky is really, really bright compared to the land, because it's the source of light. So um, just looking at this shot for a second, um, it's good that you darken the sky, but now we need to lighten the water and the uh, far shore you know, lighten up this rock a little bit and keep a little vignetting or darkening around the outer edges. So when I click on the last so and okay let's see what just happened okay didn't click I had to click anyway okay here's the last so so I'm lassoing water and the land and if I don't feather this and I just go ahead and lighten it I'm going to use levels in this case control L let me move the levels back into the screen here and I have not feathered it and so look what happens and then I'm going to deselect control D and you see it's um, a hard edge here no good so let me undo that control. Uh, they've changed it. It used to be control Z was one undo, and then now it's alt control Z to step backwards uh, more multiple times. Okay, so let's feather this. So right up at the top in the options bar, it says select and mask. Um, if it says something different, the button is still the same, and it's right here. And it opens a sub window here like this, and right here where it says feather, that's when you dial that to the right, what you're doing is smoothing the area of the selection out, blending it out. Okay, And depending on the resolution of the picture, you'll have to dial that up more or less according to what you're looking at. Since this is low res, since I got this from a blogger, I didn't have to go very far. It's helpful to hide the selection when you're making light adjustments too. So I use Control H. It's still here. I can toggle that on and off with Control and the letter H. And then Control L for levels or image adjustment levels. And then I'm bringing in the highlight right here. You see how it's blended in now? And I don't want it to look foggy like this, so I'm bringing in the blacks as well, right up to the edge of the mountain. And a little more highlights. And I can take the mids to the right if I wanted to also, just to keep it realistic looking. I can bring the highlights in a little more and take my mids down. I'm not trying to take the blacks into the main histogram though, because that would block it off. And then I'll show you before and after, control Z, before and after. You see what a dramatic difference that can make? Now that that's lighter, uh, there's less, and it also made the top of the rock here get some light, which is nice because of the feathering. But I will take one more little look at this area right through here and click select and mask. Click feather, hmm, way back like that. 
hide it, control H, levels, because I'm bringing up the light, and once again, dialing up my highlights here, just to bring a sense of presence to the land, and that light is active. So here's our focal point, and here's the light. There's also light in the sky, but uh, let me mention that in a second here. So deselect, control D, and now when uh, the sky has got overexposed areas, like these hot spots of white in here, I can't darken that any more than this. But what I could do is vignette these cor this corner a little bit, and that is to darken that to sort of match the right side here. Select and mask again, feather it back. It's just like sculpting. We pick it apart piece by piece, you know. Control H. This time, because I'm darkening, I don't use levels because it tends to raise contrast. So I'm going to use image adjustment and brightness contrast. And bring that in here and quiet it down with brightness. But I want to be careful not to get an obvious um, I'm going to lower both con brightness and uh, I don't want to, uh, what I'm trying to say here is I don't want to have the a dramatic transition in the sky like that. So I want to be a little bit careful not to o go overboard with that. And since it picked up a little extra blue, I'm going to desaturate that. So image adjustment saturation or control U is the shortcut for that. It's handy to learn just a few shortcuts. And I'm going to take some of that. Actually, I can go into the channel and go right into the blues and desaturate the blue out of that. And OK. I'm going to look at cyan and add a little cyan back. Cyan is different than blue. Blue is kind of purpley, and cyan is this color of the sky here. Ah, OK. So just looking at the changes, when I pasted it in, the picture looked like this. And now it looks like that. OK, this is what editing is all about, is to have control over the direction of the light and the brightness of the parts relative to one another, because your eye goes to the area that's light. And it's what creates interest. When it was like this, we don't really see this. We don't really care about this. Your eye just goes straight to all this blown out stuff in the sky. But in bringing light to the foreground, you see what happens? OK. So doing just the right amount is what we hope to do. Not too much, um, but don't be afraid to also do some. That's it. See you later.